Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro. It's me. I'm back. It's Cardi. It is the last, last time I think I'm going to be streaming from this location. The very last time. <laughs> My desk gets to move tomorrow and Saturday. And I should be ready for Sunday. I still have my desk to, my desk is built. Anyways, for you guys who have been following along on the Discord, by the way, for you who hasn't been following along, I've been, first of all, taking a little digital detox where I just needed a break. I've been grinding, doing three episodes a week for three years without really much of a break. So I needed to have a little bit of a break, but also, Huh, I also really needed to move. I'm <laughs> moving. I'm moving spaces. So when do I, like, how far do I want to just keep putting that off? Did I want to put that off until it got, like, until it was summer, until it was spring? Like, so I just set a date as, like, April, April 1. We are doing this transition during April, so... My desk will be moved and ready in time for Sunday's episode. And I'm so excited about this new setup. And I will do a nice desk setup tour and all of that once we were moved. All right. It's your favorite episode of the week, people. By the way, we haven't done this for a while. I'm almost forgetting how to do this whole live streaming thing. It's been... I haven't been at my desk for like 10 days. Like a week. It's... Ah, it's been amazing, actually, <laughs> just, uh, but I've been doing labor. I've been a contractor for 10 days, so a couple more days to go on being a contractor, and then I get to go back to the regular scheduled programs. Guys, it's your favorite episode of the week. It's called Real Photo Reviews. Everybody who is tuned in live, by the way, thank you for being here. April and Black Phoenix and Josh and Primo and Vicky and Calligraphy, Alpha Monk, Durell, DC Robinson, the Assistant of the Stars, Jason Williams. I appreciate you, Galt, and also Matthew Sargent. Guys, I'm so happy you guys are here with me live. I was wondering if I came back live, would anybody here be, would it be anybody, would anybody miss me if I stopped for a couple of weeks? Would anyone miss me? And also the question would be, would you guys come back if I took a little bit of a break? Because again, the break is bringing me back so refreshed and like in such a vibe, in such a mood. I'm so excited to look at your photos. Let's get into real photo reviews. The assignment this week was horizontal double page spread. Horizontal double page spread. I've hired you to shoot an editorial for Behind the Picture magazine. I need to see if you understand the concept of a double page spread. So our first submitter, his name is DC Robinson. And DC Robinson, this is a band. They're from Franklin, Tennessee. This is shot in a theater. His niche niche is band portraiture and headshots. This is DC Robinson. DC, thanks for submitting. Let's have a look at DC's picture. Let's look at this as a double page spread. And oh yes. Do we have a new double page spread graphic? Yeah, we do. So let's look at this as a double page spread. This lays out really nicely. You can see here where the gutter would be. You can see what the framing would be. And also good edging. It's good framing. You really dropped this right in between these people. The gutter is great. One thing I want you to watch is we do have to be aware of the inverse square law. And that means that your light, I'm, I'm keeping this camera off here because it's hiding the thing that I'm trying to show in this picture. The inverse square law, because your light is coming from this side, what's happening is you have perfect exposure here so we'll call this normal here is a little bright so here this is like plus a third 
here is starting to be under and then this person is very under they're under by like two-thirds of a stop when you're shooting four across you have to light from the front and you have to use a large source so that source actually captures even light i would light from the front push my light in this way and use a, a larger softbox from further back so you can have less fall off between these four people. But this person here looks like an afterthought because they're out of the light. And then also the nose shadow. The nose shadow there based on the head angle, the nose shadow here based on the head angle and the no shadow here and his bumpy nose is all accentuated because you're lighting from the side. I would never light this photo from the side. I would light this from the front. And then eye contact. I'm not sure where this guy is looking. It's like he doesn't understand that the photograph is happening. So you have to command attention. So he's not looking off when everybody else is looking at camera. So as far as a double page spread, this is absolutely, absolutely, you nailed it. I actually love the headspace. I love the headspace. I love the location. I love the idea. Everything is here for me except for the light. It's like a small, small, small thing. But as far as understanding the formatting of this assignment, as far as nailing a double page spread, you get an 11 and the smoke, my friend. All right, let's go. Okay, let's get into our next. Who's next? Next photographer is Tom Fox. Straying away from street photography, I know it's time to get back to doing what I do best. This is my hero shot, double page spread. Shot with a Nikon Z6, 70 millimeter. Um, let's look at this shot from Tom Fox. Tom Fox, let's go, Tom. I really like the submission. Let's look at this as a double page spread. The formatting is perfect. I couldn't I couldn't ask for better double page spread formatting. It's absolutely perfect. One thing I'm noticing is there's this haze that that's on every source. I'm not sure if it's a filter. I'm not sure if it's like I don't know what that like the effect is or if you're doing it in post but it makes me feel like the lens is dirty it just has like that like lens dirty kind of quality and i don't know it's it's kind of like to me taking away from the oomph of the photo the leading line all the composition everything that you have going on here with this location these blocks the position of this person everything here is just high art i love the color that's sweeping across the top and the way that you framed it really good discipline as far as your framing because you have these lines super perpendicular um although that line moves in on a bit of an angle i mean you did the best that you can Compositionally incredibly strong, Tom Fox. I'm just very curious as far as what is creating the haze. The haze for me is like, it's the only thing that I'm like wondering. And you can see the haze that I speak of. But the decisive moment, man, whew, you nailed it. This is definitely an 11, Tom Fox. This is high up on the list and very very well done tom fox all right the bar is high guys today good shit. i'm glad that you guys take this assignment seriously i haven't been on here for a while so it's nice to see when you guys are starting to like really like rock out i love it all right ready for another one scuba steve scuba steve says this gentleman has so many insane stories and i wanted to capture that nicaraguan ex-child soldier he's um amazing canon 
Um, R6, Mark II. Shot with a 50. Let's go Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve. That is probably a textbook, like one of the most textbook double page spreads. Look at the framing. Nice room for the gutter. Beautiful room for the article here. This is magazine editorial executed at a perfect, perfect level. Perfect level. I like the treatment. I like the treatment. There's a couple of smudges on the wall. Obviously, a couple of smudges in the in the paint here. Small things, but again, you can correct this by not having him so pushed back on the wall. Just pull him off the wall just a little bit so the background can kind of go out of focus a little bit. The light is inspired. Let's look at the no shadow. This no shadow, you could have lit him a little bit more radically, like put the light just a little bit more this way, just so that no shadow joins here. But what that could have done is taken away the eye patch a little bit. So I do, I do understand why you placed it and where you dropped the shadow, Steve, is, is perfect. You dropped it right in this groove so it doesn't look distracting at all. And it's also, you used a, a modifier, a softbox of some sort. I can see it's likely a white umbrella because I can see the umbrella-ish there and it's round so I know it's not a softbox or it's a hexagon-ish softbox. The light placement is great. And the treatment's nice. So again, just make sure that you have consistency. There's one thing that I noticed, the exposure here is like under by about a third. Um, you could pull that exposure up just a touch and what would give this like real polish is just a white reflector, just offset, just a white reflector kicked back like behind him just to give just a little bit of polish and separation on that edge. It's a white reflector. I wouldn't use a light. I'd just kick back just a little bit of edge, which again, just gives this photo just a little bit more polish. In this situation, I would use the silver side of the reflector and, and pull him off the background a little. So I could get the reflector behind him to mirror the position of this light and then kick just a little bit of a rim right here. Again, those are just small things that would take this picture to the like next, 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 next level, Skiba Steve, but fantastic. Really great job. Good job, dude. Woo, the bar is high. You see what happens when I take a little bit of a break? You guys dropped me the science. I like it. Victor Liska. My favorite shot of my first proper fashion shoot. Four models, two stylists, rebranding a new website, uh, rebranding of a new website for a jewelry brand. Um, shot on a rented Sony A7R. Um, shot at 6.3. This is Victor Liska. Let's go, Victor. Thanks for submitting. Let's have a look at this as a double page. And you can see you can see your framing issue right away, Victor, based on me now with this overlay. I'm hoping that this overlay is helping you. It shows you exactly where the gap would be. It's showing you, let me just drop this below my camera frame there. Yeah. So it's showing you exactly where the overlay would be, including the gutter. And you can't, the cigarette would go here and then drop and then come back like this, like this whole scene, the, the scene, the cigarette has to end before the frame starts. So for me, you missed it on the double page. You're, you were so close. You just got to back up a little bit. You're giving the headroom here as if you're shooting a cover, but you don't need that much headroom when you're shooting a double page spread. In fact, when you drop the eye line so low, 
in the frame, it actually looks a little odd and it feels like she's pushed down unless that's exaggerated like DC did in our first photograph. So for me, I would push this high and I would back up and give more space. You have to cut the frame in half and imagine what this looks like in a double page. So for me, this overlay, the new overlay for the double pages, for the horizontal images, I wasn't lying when I said there is no cropping with the double page. When you hold the camera horizontally, this is your entire frame and this is two pages in a magazine exactly. So there is no cropping. So you really have to be perfect with your spacing. Victor, so close, my friend, so close. You just needed to pull back a bit or give me a different frame. Give me a frame where you were back just a little bit. And you have to kind of have that overlay mapped in your head. This overlay that I just showed you, you have to have that overlay like locked in. And when you look through your camera, you have to picture this overlay every single time. That's what two pages looks like. All right, let's get it on. Again, the photography is amazing. Like notice I had nothing to say about the photography. Your photography was great. Like good light, oh, small things, Victor. Small things, the, the light placement, based on the light placement, your light placement is, is too much at eye line, okay? And how I can tell that is because you're actually getting up shadow here on her face. So make sure that you're aiming down so that no shadow pushes down. And this no shadow now pushes down here and joins this shadow. And now you have Rembrandt lighting, this triangle of light here. But because that only works when you light down, but you're lighting this way. So good eye tracking. You have her eyes matching where her nose is looking, which is exactly right. Good with the mouth, like it's believable. The poses, everything there is believable, but just your light placement. It's too on the nose. It's too on the nose. I like how far you were that way, but you just now have to sky the light so it comes down more. I hope that helps you. That, like, honestly, this is like, it's really good to watch and see this work because you guys are rocking it today. Good shit. Good shit, good shit, good shit, good shit. As a photographer, your portfolio is your voice in a visually crowded market. But are you confident that it's telling your story in the way that you intend? Many photographers struggle with showcasing their work effectively, often overlooking the power of a well-crafted portfolio. This is where my one-on-one -on -one portfolio review comes in. I'm offering you expert, personalized feedback on your work. With my three decades experience in pro photography, I bring you a discerning eye to your portfolio, helping you refine and package your work to make a lasting impact. We'll dive into the nuances of your style, the strengths of your composition, and the overall narrative of your portfolio in general. My focus will be on elevating your work, ensuring that it not only represents your skill, but also captivates an intended audience. Don't let your work go unnoticed. Sign up for a one-on-one -on -one portfolio review and let's fine tune your presentation to the world. You'll come away with concrete steps to enhance your portfolio, making it not just just a collection of pictures, but a powerful tool to elevate your photography career. Book your session right now and let's take the first step towards making your portfolio as amazing as your photography. Wow. All right. Who's next? Anna. Anna. Anna with a double page spread of her kids. Anna, this is fantastic. Again, double page execution at an incredible high level, Anna. This is so well done. This is an editorial lifestyle photo. Also, the intensity on this child's face, this furrow of the brow. <laughs> I am in love with this 
photo and uh, this is everything this expression on his face the eyes and also this other child not paying attention at all and and playing this game looking at this map the fact that your second child is out of focus this child was once in focus but backed up out of the photo and again the discipline at which you held and held and nailed that <laughs> this is an 11 out of 10 anna this is absolutely fantastic anna's in my master class and also in my mentorship program the light the quality of light the amount of details the crop everything is like so 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 good anna again anna you're one of those photographers that like you're better than you think you are. You're better than you think you are. Like, you're so talented. I'm just trying to, like, I'm trying to contain you to, like, a stop. Like, I want you to look at Jeff Lipsky, Anna. This is the perfect photographer for you to be looking at right now. The perfect photographer for you to be looking at right now is Jeff Lipsky because Jeff Lipsky is a natural light specialist and he has a way of just shooting the real and he turns it into, I mean, this is his business. Like this is big business. He just makes super easy photos, but looking at Jeff Lipsky and looking at this type of lifestyle work. And then I want you to see this. Do you understand? Like you are dropping your photographs on a way that are hitting. Like, I don't even know if you know how hard this photo hits. Look at this photo of Jeff Lipsky and look at this photo from Anna. It's like, oh my goodness. Again, I want you to start really looking at Lipsky and look at the way that now he expands these ideas and turns them into lifestyle photo shoots where you can sell products, takes these ideas and turns them into making photos where he's ex he's taking a photo, but he turns it into making a photo. All of these executions, this is a photographer. I really want you to take in because again, look at Jeff Lipsky shooting a celebrity with his kid and look at Anna shooting her kids like lean in Anna, you are on the road. This is Anna Kaya. Let's go, Anna. Well done. Well done. Another 11. Just fantastic. Fantastic. I have to say the level of submissions um have increased and improved at such a monumental level it's it's making me emotional like you're listening and you're you're registering you're taking the information that you're learning and you're applying that and understand you're not doing this to please me you're not doing this to please me this is for you to be understood within the industry. The industry understands work that works. And when you're the creator of the work, all work works for you because you made it, but not all work works. And I try to help photographers see in their own work, work that works and work that doesn't work and why it doesn't work and why work works. Does that work for you? Does that work? I hope it's not too confusing. Is that too confusing? <laughs> Was that too confusing for you two at home? Are you lost? Honestly, are you lost, you two? I think this one's lost, like this one here. Yeah, I thought so. Making work that works, that gets you work. That's how you work. Oh my goodness, that was Anna. Miss Jennifer. <laughs> I'm so happy with you people. I'm so happy with you people because you listen. 
you listen oh my god this is probably the best submissions i've ever got honestly this is probably the best set of submissions i've ever got Miss Jennifer says, this is my first flat lay. It was fun, but I struggled with the composition because I felt like I was shooting upside down. I'm glad Cardi is pushing us. He's my real hero. Miss Jennifer. Now, you at home who watch this program and maybe, maybe like you're playing along, like you're watching Hell's Kitchen or like you're watching Survivor and starting to like, even if you don't submit your own photos, you're starting to remember, hey, this is what Jennifer's photos and this is what Miss Lana's photos look like. You're starting to remember these characters that are continually submitting. Miss Jennifer is one of those characters that <laughs> I pushed her to do a flat lay. I said, Jennifer, you need to shoot flat lay. This is Miss Jennifer's first flat lay. <laughs> Let's go. Miss Jennifer's first flat lay. I want to make sure that I'm seeing the whole picture. Yes, this is the whole picture. Miss Jennifer, I think you might have changed the framing or the proportion. So when I pull in my double page, it seems like um, you're 4,000 wide, but it's like the proportions are a little bit different, but that's okay. I did, no one's hurt. You can still see, I can see that it would have laid out how it would have laid out. And irregardless as to whether, what the proportions are, you can still see where the spoon is. So we can see how this is pushing over past our gutter here which we have to watch. We can see how this shell could have pushed back a little bit here. And what that would have done is you, you, you make room for the gutter. Because really, the gutter has to go through here or the gutter has to go through here. Like you have to make room for your gutter. So with this picture, that's the only thing that I have issues with. Because if I take my overlay away, this is a beautifully composed, well lit. I love the light. The side light coming in here is excellent, but it also looks like there's some doubling. So I'm trying to figure out why there's what looks to be doubling. Do you see that haze that's around everything? Like, are, is that happening in post? Do you see the doubling here happening? But it's not happening here. So I'm just wondering what that is and the double happening here and up here. So small things when you're going in deep. Obviously this little hair here. When you're going in deep. Yeah, that's the only thing that I'm wondering about. Is it is it a long exposure? Did the camera knock? I think you knocked the camera during this exposure because there seems to be a doubling that's happening on everything here. So that could be what happened. But honestly, Miss Jennifer, this is by far your best photo. YBP in a absolute long time. This is absolutely smoke. So good, so good. Small formatting issues, but the problem is that you don't have the proper top-down rig in order to do top-down shots. Now, I'm gonna show you on Amazon, um, uh, bah, 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 bah. top down setup um here you go so this this is what you have to start thinking about is this you need a top down setup or this or like some way that you can aim your camera top down. For me, this is the way that you do it. This is the most stable, safe way, is that you buy this arm. And this arm, 
you can see attaches to your tripod plate, comes with a sound bag, counterweight, and then your camera. And you can make it exactly parallel, exactly parallel. And you can also now attach your camera to your laptop so you're tethered, so you can actually see and move and adjust so you're not up there trying to uh, uh, uh. like of course it feels odd when you're doing that when you're shooting it like this especially as a product photographer this is a tool you have to have you have to it's essential because top down this is how the pros do it and essentially like the pros go even further like why waste a tripod for something like that why waste a tripod when you could just get this like literally you could just get this and it's just always attached and you can do top-down shots you can attach all kinds of different stuff to it and you can adjust the width so for me like if that's what you're trying to do which is um be a product photographer just get the proper setup so you can do incredible top downs you know again some of these setups look expensive but if you buy the expensive stuff you buy it once own it forever but top down that's literally um the next thing all right that is miss jennifer well done miss jennifer this is dana mk the lovely Janaya shot with a Nikon D810 50 millimeter at a 30th of a second, Dana. Let's look at Dana's work. All right, Dana, thanks for submitting. Let's look at this as a double page. Lays out perfectly as a double page, really perfectly. When you really start looky looky, you can see, um, let me just show you a couple of angle things here. The hardest edge is this edge here between the green and the, and you can see how that's not straight, but it appears like this is more straight. It appears like this is more straight. And then if you look at the tiles, the tiles are now at a different angle but then when you look at these ones these ones appear pretty straight so where where you're standing height wise is also like i wouldn't you can't do this without a tripod like the up down adjustment over like in order to get the height with the 50 millimeter is so incredibly difficult i think you did a really really good job on this there's a couple of things that i'm worried about the light on her oops the light on her is not really inspired i think that this is likely a natural light shot just based on um looking inside the wine bottle and seeing that window there and seeing that there's light coming in from this direction this is a natural light picture. The exposure here is probably under by about a third on her skin. Uh, I understand there, it's a bathroom. There's not a lot of places, but because of that, you're now restricted with your readings. And if I go back to your readings, you're saying that you shot this at 6.3 ISO 64 at a 30th of a second so ISO 64 and then natural light I, I, I feel like ISO 64 I never shoot anything lower than 100 unless you're like in the brightest of light ISO 64 unless you meant ISO 640 just more probable it's ISO 640 um and not 64 um ISO 640 is like ISO 400 ISO um 500 then it goes 640 then it goes 800 so um i'm betting that that's 640 a 30th of a second is cool i think that still you could have shot it at 5.6 or should have shot it at 4 instead of at 6.3 um i know that depth of field is probably a factor just based on um 
getting this in focus, the label and her, you aimed for her being in focus, but then that made the label out of focus. So again, this is a tricky photo. You nailed the double page spread, Dana, like truly you nailed it. Again, I'll show you this layout. It's perfect. I just think this tub, the way that the tub's on the angle makes it really hard to look visually right because then if you level the tub, then the tiles are off. It's just like, it's a tricky location to make this photo. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. Whenever you have hard lines like that, I, I look for straight walls, <laughs> clean walls, because this is the problem. And again, I just would have loved a little bit more exposure, but definitely, definitely a good effort. And as far as a lifestyle piece, again, I'm giving you an 11. This is a banger. It's definitely a great photo. I just need, and Dana is new, so I need more photos from Dana, which will help me understand your work and um you more so i can continue to bring you value let's go dana thanks for submitting who's on the docket mercedes mckinley um all right so this is a new light um and shot with the canon e 70d with a 50 30th of a second 1.8 at ISO 800 so chess um Mercedes um looking at I haven't seen the photo but you're shooting at at 1.8 which is wide open at a 30th of a second in low light I already know I haven't even looked at the photo yet it's out of focus I haven't even looked at the photo yet. You know why? Because it's shot at 1.8, wide open, and it's a 30th of a second. I haven't looked at the photo, but I'm betting you, as much as you're paying me to watch this show right now, that this is an out of focus picture. Let's look. What do I see? What do I see here? I see an absolute mess, Mercedes. I see out of focus photo and i see somebody who is not practiced at all with lighting testing your new light using red instead of white light because it looks cool and doing it at night because it's harder and missing the fundamental foundation of photography meaning you shoot at an f-stop that is not wide open. You've heard me say a thousand times, don't shoot wide open because wide open is not the sharpest aperture, especially when you're shooting with a $200 lens. A Canon standard EF $99 1.8 at 1.8 is gonna look like this. And then a 30th of a second. Here's another rule, one over the focal length of the lens, one over the maximum focal length of the lens. If you're shooting with a 70 to 200, it's one over 200. Even if you're shooting at 70, the, the minimum shutter speed is one over the focal length of the lens, the maximum focal length of the lens. So if you're shooting at a 50, with a 50, one over 50 or a 50th of a second is the slowest you can hand hold that lens without camera shake. So number one, you shot at a 30th. Number two, you shot at 1.8. So seeing those settings, I don't even need to look at your photo. I already know it's out of focus. And then I look at the photo and it's out of focus. So that's you not following fundamentals from like even before you got lights turned on a light, you're not following the foundations of like those rules. So it's gonna be mud. Do you know what I mean? So the, the fundamental core thing doesn't change whether you're shooting natural light or artificial light. But when you now make that light red, it's like, oh, it's cool. Okay, cool. It's cool to you and it's cool to him because it's artsy, but you can't sell this to the client. What, the, the sunglasses brand that I can't see on a guy who's out of focus? in a scenario that's overblown, like your camera 
you don't have the camera that can handle this kind of contrast. You're shooting with a camera that's 10 years old. So that camera doesn't have the same sensor that my camera has. My camera can handle this. My camera can, like, you don't have, so walk before you run. Walk before you run. Because when you run before you walk, you're just like literally miss, 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 miss over and over and over again. And it's like, it's hard because when you walk before you run, you just realize like you learn to really walk really fast, really well. And you get to walk, you walk faster, walk faster. Next, you know, you're running. But by knowing the fundamentals along the way, what happens when you run before you walk is you just do things. And then after you ask me to look at it and I'm like this mistake, this mistake, this mistake, this mistake. It's because you're running before the walking. You know what I mean? And it happens over and over and over and over with you, um, Mercedes. And I try to, hey, uh, uh, hey, ha, 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 ha. but you keep doing it. You're, you're excited and I appreciate that, but you can't forget the foundations and the fundamentals of photography. And that like, when it comes to lighting, whoo, my guy, this is just like, it's a mess. And uh, I know you're, I know you can do better. I know you can, I have seen you do better. I've seen you make incredible photographs during the day, master shooting during the day, but you're shooting at night because you got lights and you want to learn like you can do that, but don't forget the fundamentals of photography. Like don't shoot less than one over the maximum focal length of your lens and don't shoot wide open with a lens that costs a hundred dollars. I have a lens that costs $3,000 and I don't shoot wide open with that lens. So that is Mercedes. Let's look at the framing one last time. The framing you're, you're just there with the framing, but his hand on his lip like that, the first thing that I want to do is slap his hand away from his mouth. It's like he's trying, like, like, really, dude? It makes me want to punch this guy. So again, it's our, it's up to us to undo people who don't know that they look like an idiot. It's up to us to help them and say, ah, ah, don't touch your face because you wouldn't be here That's not what you would do. So stop them from doing that. Seriously. And all these faces that it just makes me don't do that. It makes me want to punch this guy. And the whole idea when we shoot men, we're shooting men for other guys and we're shooting men for women. If a guy likes the photo of a different guy, the girl will go crazy for it. Trust me. That's why Details Magazine, that's why men can look at Details Magazine because it's men who look like dudes. They look like men and you never see anything like, it's just, ugh. don't do that, please, Mercedes. All right. Yeah, like, here's a rule of thumb. Don't let your models touch their face. Just do that because you know why nails always nails look their nails are bad they're, they're they don't have a manic like they're not hand models their fingers are jacked like it just looks it's not something that we do during the day unless we are animated and talking and it's like that's where hands but you don't see me break and do this like i don't i don't rest like maybe i'm resting like that as i'm thinking about something but Photographing that moment, that would be an honest, real moment. Artificially trying to do that looks ridiculous. So the pose is no pose. This is a hero shot. This is the whole idea. I asked for a hero double page spread, a hero shot. It's got to be likable. And if you're attaching it to a product like those sunglasses, find me a sunglass ad where the, ma the male model is touching their face. Find me one. You won't find one. So then don't let your model do it. All right. This is my brother, Carti, also known as Leslie, giving me a hero picture. Les Carti. 
What you're noticing is passion and emphatically emphasizing my point. Emphatically. This looks very iPhone, big bro, or very um, Samsung photo and not shot with the Canon. It's hard for me to get the layout right um, as a double page spread. If you are trying to shoot hero photos, they're never going to be happening with your iPhone. They're never going to be happening with your Samsung because when I really look, 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 look at the quality of the photo, it's, it's the, the image quality that is making it so this isn't a hero photo. It's the image quality. It looks like you, gr you wanted to just submit something and make sure that you had something in by the deadline. So you're just like, ah, click, boom, boom, boom. But is this going to be the opening shot on your website, Les? Is this the opening shot on your website? I think the answer is no. So does that mean that it, it qualifies as a hero shot? I think the answer is no. And based on the stuff that we've seen today and seeing how high the bar is today, and also you're my actual brother, I'm gonna say to my actual brother, it's not good enough, Les. It's not good enough. It's not good enough for your business. It's not good enough to represent how good you are. And for how good your paint is, this isn't do it justice. Take the car outside, take the car outside. So it's a sky that's reflecting here, not the top of the shop, just where it is. Like if you're trying to make the hero shot, it's not, let me just take a picture, which is what you did. It's making a picture. You need to make more effort, pull out the proper gear, take the car outside, shine the car up, wait for the perfect day. And for God's sakes, don't shoot it with your phone because that's not you taking it seriously. And if this isn't shot on your phone, then the quality isn't at the level that it needs to be. But I'm convinced this is shot on your phone. So this is me talking to my brother. And again, I love my brother and I care about him. And I also like my brother needs to succeed. I mean, my brother's an incredibly talented painter, um, but he's also trying to market himself. So he's trying to be the photographer that markets himself and the painter who does the work. He's doing both hats. My thing, Durell, who is also in BC, in Vancouver, have Durell come and shoot hero photos for you. Durell gets to practice on shooting paint and details. You can teach him exactly how he needs to shoot it. And those are the photos that you use to market your business. But this, although it falls under the category of a horizontal double page spread, it is so far beneath the quality that you're capable of. It's so, it's like, it's a mail in and it doesn't matter. Even if you're my family less, it's just, it doesn't move the needle. You can't use it. So it's not a hero picture. I love you, my guy, but if you're busy, you're just busy. It's okay. Just when you're not busy, then make the hero photo. But any mail in, any time that you're doing something at a less, you wouldn't paint a car like that. You wouldn't paint a car like that. You wouldn't mail it in when it comes to painting a car because it's your work and you've been doing it for 40 freaking years. You would never do that with a car. So when it comes to documenting the car, you're mailing it in. So imagine 12 weeks of work painting the car, 10 minutes taking the photo, five minutes, three minutes taking the photo. <laughs> when you look at it that way less, you really think it's kind of funny. Like. 12 weeks working on something, but then documenting it, you're spending like no time on it. So you need to spend real time documenting your work, real time and care and craftsmanship when it comes to documenting your work and it will show that you care and then you'll be booked three years in advance. But I'm sorry, this doesn't cut it, my guy. I love you though. <laughs> you know that. I just, I speak truth. I can't not. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry guys. If eh, truth can never be an offense, it should be a gift. It should be looked upon as a gift. And what I try to do and what I try to be for you is 
um, the industry, how the industry sees your work if they don't know you. Like the things that people who are in the industry would see in your work that you might not see in your own. And I, I show you what to do to correct it so you can go and not make that mistake again. If I see the same mistake over and over and over again by the same photographer, I start to get frustrated as you would. As you would if you were the editor and you were hiring a photographer and you told them a correction or told her a correction and then the next time they did the same mistake, you just wouldn't hire them. You just wouldn't hire them, right? So here, this is a safe space, but I can tell you truth. Sometimes that truth, it might feel like, oh my God, did he say that? Why do you feel that? It's because you have like, feelings and all this emotional attachment to your work that you care so much about that doesn't do anything and doesn't move the needle that no one else cares about except for you you need to make work that other people care about you should care about the work that you make that other people care about and in fact you should look and see what other work other people are caring about and making work like that so people can care about your work too so it's hard it's hard at times to hear. And for people who don't, people are afraid to submit because I don't screw around. <laughs> you notice when I put this slate up, it says real photo reviews. It doesn't say photo reviews. It says real photo reviews. Meaning this is real. I'm telling you the truth. The truth is an offense, but it is definitely not a sin. And it is the exact thing that people who are trying to make it in this industry is what they need to hear. This is April. April is a product photographer. Let's go April. April with a suspension shot. April swinging for the fences with this photo. Let's look at the double page. April, this is a really, really, really good effort. I mean, could we shine up the go prizzy a little bit more, a little bit of a corner up here, a couple of little flecks on the glass here that we could have shined up, but the sharpness? Yes, sir, yes. Honestly, I'm really impressed with this. Obviously, you can see we have the most sharpness here, but the aperture that you chose we lose sharpness on this depth. The distance between here and here is like less than a half a centimeter, like a quarter of an inch. But in that quarter of an inch, we lose focus. And also it's rotated that way. So because of that, on that rotation, it's also causing this corner to be closer to than this corner and way closer than that corner so we are losing a little bit of focus but still it is phenomenal and i'm really really impressed with you april this is you swinging for the fences this is you trying something new and it's not a cutout you did it in camera you either suspended this on a background, like you actually did this. This isn't a composite. This isn't cheesily done. This is in camera and I'm impressed. Um, would I have shot a different product other than the GoPro here? Yeah, like with this idea, the GoPro is like an action camera. So you need to show it like, if it's in this kind of an environment, it needs to be black is if you look at um if you look at gopro oops i can't uh my fingers don't work i literally have forgotten how to live stream if you look at gopro and see how they market their cameras let's look at the hero 12 black and see how they show their product photography when I talk about intelligent imitation, this is what I mean, is you now, if you want to shoot a GoPro, go to the GoPro website and now look at how they show the GoPro. They show it like, like in use. That's product photography for a GoPro. So when it's the camera only, when it's the camera only, their thing is they show it always on gray. 
it's always on a dark color, black, gray. So seeing your picture on red, it's not GoPro branding. GoPro branding's blue and black. So that's not the right color for GoPro. But again, this is where it comes to like intelligent imitation, where you hear me say, we use intelligent imitation. If that's the product that you're choosing to shoot, well, then you need to look at GoPro photography and see how GoPros actually are always shot on a dark background, always. So once you learn that, well, now you're like, okay, well, I guess I'm not shooting this on red because this is how they shoot them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then now you can see the light and that hard softbox edge that you see right here. So you can actually see where the light is coming from. And then you can see the angle at which they're doing it. And then you try to imitate this picture. So I am incredibly proud, April, that you are swinging for the fences. But now with that explanation, you can see how I said this product is wrong for this particular why is my time warp not working i'm sorry oh there it is it is working <laughs> i'm like oh my god <laughs> um so now you can see what i mean when i say that it's the wrong product for this background or why i say you need to shoot this on black on black so it's one or the other, but again, the level up as far as the delivery, the product, the shot, the idea, I'm just saying more, 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 do it more, do it more, do it with different products and do it again with black background with a GoPro. So that's what you got to do. That is April. And oh yeah, by the way, that's an 11. If it wasn't clear, great job. Great job. It's a little empty on the other side of the frame, which is why it would feel more GoPro-ish if it was on black or dark. And um, it doesn't need any other elements if it's on black. With this, it feels a little blank, which I would have just punched in and been a bit closer on the GoPro. All right. Whew, some of this stuff I've forgotten how to do. It's been so long. Stuart has said hero landscape shot of Mount Rainer. Um, Canon R6, nifty 50, shot at f8, a 500th of a second, shot at ISO 100. Hero shot from Stuart. Let's go Stuart. Woo! Look at that range. I mean, it's it's really difficult with landscapes to drop to drop gutters down the middle in this kind of an instance for this double page spread assignment i would want to drop the gutter here and put this on one page this becomes one page and you drop the gutter here or i would drop the gutter um right here so let me draw a better line yeah these are for me the two spots that i would drop the gutter but putting the gutter dead center now gives the art director of the magazine very few options. And sadly, now, because this doesn't fit without taking away your main feature, the only place I have to put this in a magazine is on one half of one page. Because of the center layout, now this picture goes right here and then the article goes down here and then an advertisement goes right here because of now because of the placement of this mountain i have no choice as the art director 
your real estate has now gone from double page spread to now half page because of the composition. I have no choice. And you can see it because of where you dropped the peak. The peak comes right through my picture. I need the peak to go, I need the, literally that to be the gutter. <laughs> like that's my gutter. Push this entire thing that way. Put this peak here. Boom, gutter, mini thing here. And now the article can go here. So for me, it's like, yes, it's a horizontal picture, but in every case, including, look, this first photograph that DC Robinson submitted where, do you understand how much of a risk this kind of a photograph is to make and submit? But he took a risk and look at the placement. It's exactly how it's supposed to be exactly placed between like perfectly so we have to be thinking about that with every one of our captures it's just it gets it's so easy to get away from us like these double page spreads it's so easy to get away from us but as i showed you um it is possible and just with that little shift this photo would have absolutely sung it's a beautiful photo great composition again it's like it's a hero shot um but trying to con trying to hold on to that mountain in the background trying to hold on to that like you're trying to hold on to too many things you're trying to hold on to too many things and in order for this to go in a magazine you got to give up this mountain just give it up push this over cut the mountain right here so you can actually feature this peak and then have this go off to the seven, second page or take this peak, push it that way. And then you can feature this more closer to the center gutter because it doesn't matter if it gets cut off. I hope this brings you value. All right, let's see who's next, Romeo. All right, one of the people who brings true value to my life and so many others shot with the Fuji X-T3 55mm shot at ISO 200 f8 at a 30th of a second. 30th of a second, Romeo. Watch your shutter speeds. Don't go slower than a 50 with this particular lens. Let's have a look at this as a double page spread. Let's go, Romeo. Good job. It's a little close. You can see we're a little close to the border here, a little close here. You can also see based on where her eyes are, we got lots of space here where we could have pushed her over. Also headroom, yes, headroom like this when we're shooting a cover, but when we're shooting a double page spread, we don't need that much headroom. Now we're just worrying about not getting cut off because of the eighth of an inch around the page that we lose with bleed. Um, close, but I think that that gutter is just a little bit claustrophobic. Your light is you're doing front light on her based on the nose shadow, but you're hitting her off the axis. I mean, again, a very interesting way of doing the double page spread. You could also have her literally sitting straight at camera and just offset her on one side, but she's still looking at camera. There's no need for you to move off the axis to like offset her. You can literally just turn the camera sideways and just include what's happening over there. I've seen oftentimes you use a thin set, you shoot horizontal and you just show what's happening behind the scenes on the other side of the page, which also works. For me, I really think that the light um, based on her head angle, the no shadow is nice. Um, it could go a little bit higher. Um, the last thing is based on the light, you're getting the reflection in the glasses because the light isn't high enough to not catch here. 
Um, last thing is the blue. The blue is never really a like a great flattering color for Caucasian skin. <laughs> blue just doesn't look good on white skin unless unless you like counter it with like I see you're trying to counter it here with like a color but it's not I see blue first before I see anything else so again when it comes to skin I would still like be working on your light placement and getting natural skin color and use the gel color for highlights and edges use color up there but color on the skin it just like it works sometimes but for me when you're doing that when you're new with lighting it becomes like oh my god i love that shot oh i wish i hadn't have used blue light on that one i wish i had to use natural light on because you can't color balance out gelled light once you use gelled light you can't color balance that out without throwing off everything else so yeah my vibe is is like be more minimal with the gel rgb lights it's like it's a trend again i'll say look at jeff lipsky look at lipsky you'll see like the whole gelled light thing it's a trend okay so learn how to be classic and timeless and think that oh i'm gonna use a colored light oh i'm gonna like it's just a crutch to make something that's not that good look a little bit better don't use crutches make the work in black and white look amazing then it's going to look amazing in color but don't use colored light um like mercedes did like as your hook because it ends up just looking whack and when you look at contemporary photography like working photographers you'll see like yeah i can see this photographer doesn't do that at all yeah because it's a crutch see what i mean it's like he uses a red set he'll use a red set but he's not putting red light on her. It's classic because look at what like Caucasian skin looks better without blue gel. Like when you look at this now, the skin tone, now that I've said that, you're like, oh yeah, I actually do see how Caucasian skin, like look at this girl's skin, natural no natural light no hooks and then you see like oh yeah blue skin so understand like would this picture be amazing without the bread without the blue light without the gel you know like make timeless and classic pictures without relying on a crutch because take away your gelled lights are you still a photographer can you like that's the whole thing that you have to ask like what happens when you don't have your crutches what happens when you don't have your crutches? Can you still make photos? Or are you relying, your whole thing falls apart if you don't have your tricks and your Photoshop tricks and all of that stuff, you know? I did this career for 20 years without Photoshop. And still, I barely touch it. I, I mean, I touch it with every image, but I don't, you, it doesn't look like I'm, my stuff is posty. And when I use gels, like I use them, you know? It's really like, it's part of the image kai creates and yeah just lastly on that romeo um when you're looking at my goodness when you're looking at even my work looking at how often i use gels like know that this entire thing I shot with no gels the client the art directed added the gels after I shot this fully clean just like um color every once in a while I do this but look at how hard I lean in on the gels it's just like it's just gel and look at the light placement so it's like 
majority of my stuff, it's clean. There's no bells and whistles. There's no tricks. There's no hooks. It's just photography. But then I do this and it's crazy because this is like Apple and it's a computer lab. And do you understand how boring this computer lab looked without me adding some gelled light? But I lit his face with his monitor. His monitor is the light source. I put the monitor on a white screen and the monitor is lighting his face. And then I have an LED over here kicking this red light in. So, but most of my stuff, look, 97% of, oh, there's a little hint of blue, which I've done never. 90% of my stuff is just clean, 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 clean. Oh, there's a little bit of special effects. Clean, 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 clean. Don't rely on crutches, man. Clean. Yeah, don't rely on crutches. Telling you, natural light, outside, open shade. Like, this is how we have to shoot. Because, again, the tricks, tricks are for kids, man. We don't need that stuff. Honestly, we don't need that stuff. Let the art director see what our work looks like without the tricks. And then they can be like, hey, can you add gels? Or can you try that? Like, sure. But let's see what the stuff looks like with no tricks. You know? Clean. You want a clean emoji now, Yana? Clean, clean. <laughs> Let's go. Kai creates. This image is Kai's son in Malibu. Um, candid. Shot with a Panasonic. All right, Kai. Let's have a look at this photo from Kai. A beautiful, beautiful double page execution. Like literally textbook. And tell me, Kai, you didn't actually make a photo in a situation where you were taking a photo. Tell me you didn't slow down, compose, reorient your camera, make sure, look at how tonally you could just literally pull colors from this thing and match different tones. Like in this, like from what he's wearing, it matches this scene perfectly. Look at the focus. Look at the sharpness. Look at those eyes. Even that as a photo is just a showstopper. So for me, Kai, this is utterly, utterly exceptional. Exceptional. Notice how, notice how his son is looking inwards towards the other page. That's how it goes. Like if he's over, like, Left or right, they can look at camera. Doesn't matter, left or right. But if they're not looking at camera, if they're on the left side, they're looking into the magazine. If they're on the right side, they're looking into the magazine. So Kai even nailed that. Like you literally hit this one out of the ballpark, my friend Kai. Well done. I don't need to continue to just pump smoke. <laughs> for the next hour? <laughs> well, this is good. Really, really good. Submissions are good today, guys. Really good. Really, really, really good. Durell. Durell. Making editorial photos with people who aren't used to being in front of the camera. Durell. True Eyes. R650. Um... Small thing, small thing, which is obviously I just said it, where he's now looking out of frame, but oh my goodness, man, look at your frame. Uh, look at that centering. Look at the composition. Yo, Storm coming with the gifted baby. Let's go, Storm coming, dropping a gifted member seat. What happens when someone 
becomes a member, gifts a member. I burn down my place and oh my goodness, my new place, there's a lot of wood. So <laughs> when I hit the, when I set the fire, we might only be able to do this once and I might just burn down the studio that I just started. Thank you, Storm Cummins. I appreciate you for gifting that membership. Durell, the one problem is that he should be oriented and looking into frame, but this does give me a sense of mystery because if you think about this, I'm going to argue both sides of the fence. Vladimir, let's go back for three months, buddy. I think appreciate you. Um, I'm going to argue both sides of the fence. This is a right page. This is the page that you turn and he's looking to the next page. Why would you, what, like, why would he be looking backwards? Well, he'd be looking backwards because this is where the article would start. And this is where the headline would be. And this is where the article would be. So that's why he would look in that way. But this is like almost like a true crime kind of a photo. So the fact like that he's looking this way is very relevant. His body language looks kind of copish. His cut makes me feel he's kind of copish. Exposure here, Durrell, is probably like, I don't know, I'd call this two tenths of a stop under. Um, the contrast is something that I want you to notice. Like it's very gray. It's a little gray. Like if you look at this photo, you don't see anything white. I see black, I see gray, but I don't see enough white, but I see a lot of black. So something to watch again, small things here, I would have taken out of the frame, small things here, I would have taken out of the frame to just make it look like ridiculously clean and like, couple things back here behind his jacket this this I would have taken away um there's a highlight down here under his crotch that I would have taken down because it's kind of distracting <laughs> small things but and again I would just I'm sure you didn't shoot one frame I'm sure there's lots there's pictures where he's looking at camera there's pictures where he's looking in there's pictures where he's looking out and you chose this picture I know there's at least 50 because you're in my program I know that you know how to shoot through the photo so again it's an 11 out of 10 the question is did you pick the right frame I know the frame exists here and also with the processing of the black and white again more contrast just a little bit more umph. these blacks are supposed to be black right here and again not so black that we lose shadow detail but Drop the black point a touch, uh, increase the shadow detail a touch, increase the highlights a touch. Like there's things that we can do in order to like stretch the range a little bit and give us more whites, more blacks, and like a little bit less on the mid-tones without destroying the photo. There's a way to do it. Um, again, post this in the raw up raw processing folder. And when I move into the new space, I will be processing some RAWs. That is Durell Scott. Thank you, Durell, for submitting. All right. Durell. All right. Liza Hyder. Liza says, Elizabeth is wearing bluebird dress I designed for an upcoming fashion show. Let's go. Kelowna Fashion Weekend this July. I'll present eight one-of-a-kind looks using bird and animal fabrics. Shot with the Nikon 850, ISO 200, 85, F9, 160 of a second. Shot at the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle. This is Liza Hyder. Liza, let's go. Let's look at this as a double. This is a really lovely image. I feel like, I mean, the dress is beautiful. The piece is beautiful. I feel like her body language is a little bit off. Like, 
the location is so next level so next level but her body language with her arm the way that she's holding her arm looks a little bit off her head angle where i mean it just her shoulders not being square like this and her it just it just her body's broken it just looks a little broken again it's like the the new pose is no pose and you've nailed some sick poses liza like i've literally we've talked about your poses and we know the new meta is no pose like this girl just standing straight facing forward so you can just see the cut of the dress looking at camera like stark and kind of expressionless would it like literally be like and I, maybe you have that frame again you're only able to submit one so um because again if you had if i had multiple submissions i'd be looking at photos for a week because again i do three hour shows and it's only like one submission per photographer photographer also i want you to look at the spacing here versus the spacing here you can see that based now on the double page she's like very hyper biased towards the center of the frame you got lots of room on that side so seeing her dropped right there would be like do you know what i mean so again it's small things and also the reason that i have these extra pieces around the gutter is that shows you like how you're you're losing everything in between this line like in between this line you're losing everything because that's where the magazine meets so we can't put anything important there but as you start to get claustrophobic there it now pulls this towards the center so it actually starts to get hard to see this design because it's too pushed into the center of the magazine which is why it needs to be pushed over so it's small things liza but honestly it's such a great photo maybe you have other edits that are pushed over beautiful light beautiful light like just a really sick vibe like i just would love to see the like the undone and also like leaning against this wall in the background there's like so many like this location is i would i could shoot 12 editorials in this spot like it's mind bending thank god you found it and please shoot there again you get the 11 just a couple of mistakes there liza but again a fantastic photo the level is gone way 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 up way up i should take breaks more often the level has gone way up donna donna says this is my test this is my shot of a bottle of versace blue for men shot with a canon rebel um iso 100 4.5 at a tenth of a second with an 85 Shooting at a tenth of a second is A-OK -okay when you're on sticks. Let's have a look at Donna. Let's go, Donna. Let's look, this is a double page. OK, OK. Let's check my focus here. Focus is better, but there's still something that's happening, Donna, that you're doing in post-production that's giving us, like, it's almost like uh it's it's not as sharp as it could be this is better than your last picture it's better than your last picture but there's still something here that is not a hundred percent that you're doing in post-production you are doing something you're doing some sort of like filter or something that is making your photos look liquidy. They're not like sharp. There's something, I'm positive. The la this now, if your last one, it was 100%, this is now 50%. I like, but if I open up another person's photo, let's let me just go back to Liza's photo. And I look at Liza's photo and I pull Liza's photo up to 100%. Um, yeah, at 100% there. 
and we look at this and then and I'm looking at this sharpness in here in this shirt and then I pull up your photo and I make it at the same one click and I look in here there's something that's not right there's something that's not as sharp as it could be and I know the edge on this label I know the edge on this lion I know the edge of this glass like all of this is sharper and I'm trying to figure out what you're doing that's like destroying your files there's some post-production that you're doing that I need to catch and in fact I want you to submit the this file with no processing like in Lightroom right click and then go to settings on the photo and then say reset photo so it takes away all your processing and then export that photo as a JPEG and I want to see that picture because I need to see what this picture looks like straight at a camera so I can get determine if your lens is knocked out of alignment. Your lens could be knocked out of alignment and that could be why this like your images just look a little off. The 50 millimeter camera, I mean the 50 millimeter Canon, like the EF, like the basic one, you're shooting with a Rebel. It's like, and also you're shooting with a Rebel. So your sensor quality is like, trying to figure out if it's your lens or your sensor quality and whichever one it is, if it's your sensor, then it might mean you might have to upgrade. Um, but it, it's tricky because you're trying to grow with your photography, but you're making work that you can't show. Cause when you look at it at hundred percent, it like we see this, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to find out what your, what the problem is Donna, so we can solve it. So you can go on to making photos without having that like, blurry issue that you're having on like on the back end of your photos compositionally this is really strong you can see spatially if this is the center and you have that much space that way look at it up here you can see that you could have pushed this way over because you you, you put this on the thirds we have a grid on our camera and it's like, oh, okay, here's a third and here's a third. And how many of you find yourself dropping your subjects on the third because those are the composition lines and that's what we're told to do. This is exactly what Liza did. If you look at it, it's exactly what Liza did. Dropped exactly on the third because we have these guidelines and it's like, we say, show us the guidelines, show us thirds. And we put it, there's a third here. And then there's a third here, which is exactly where Liza dropped her subject because we're told to drop it right on the thirds. And look what she did. She put it right there on the thirds. But then how does that work in a double page spread? So don't believe all the rules that you hear. But do know that this is what it looks like when it's actually in application. In application, this is your double page spread in application, in a magazine. So now, how well does your thirds concept work in this application? It doesn't work at all. So you have to push your subject, as Jason says, outside the third. And in fact, what you do is you metaphorically draw a line up the center of your frame and then you compose your subject off in the center of that line. Like you're like, oh, okay, the center is right here. Okay, so that's where I drop my, it, like it's literally, it varies for every picture, but those grid lines, I use those grid lines mostly when I'm shooting vertical so I can use it as a guide for how high my headspace should be as, as opposed to my masthead. But when you're shooting horizontal, this is two pages in a magazine exactly with no cropping. Like literally two pages in a magazine exactly with no cropping. So if you drop your thing on a third, you can't move it over. You understand you can't move it over. There's no way to recreate this photo. There's no way to move this photo over. There's no way to fix this. 
because what you're doing, the only way to fix it is to crop in. So you have to punch in now and do, you now have to do this, which you're now losing, you're losing sensor. And you have to keep doing that until it works. So it's like there is no slide over when you make mistakes. So untrain your brain to line things up on thirds when you're shooting horizontally. It doesn't work if you want to see that work in a magazine. I hope that brings you value. All right, let's get into, we're in the last few submissions here. That was Donna as well as Liza. This is Donna's photo here. Again, Donna, I do need to find what that focus problem is. Please help me help you solve it, please. That's the goal, <laughs> is to help me help you solve it. That's what we're trying to do. By the way, if you haven't hit the like button, I never ask you guys to hit the like button. It's usually my chat, my live chat, who goes ham saying, dude, there's 57 people watching. There better be 57 likes when I see this freaking stream. But, um... Hey, hit the like button if you feel like you're liking my content. How about that? <laughs> Sebastian K. One of my recent portraits shot with the 85. Um, F8, one hundredth of a second, one light setup. Sebastian K. Sebastian, Sebastian. Let's look at this framing. It definitely works framing wise for sure. The eye line horizon for me feels kind of claustrophobically low. And it's also now because of where that drops the chin. So claustrophobic to the bottom of the frame. All of this is unnecessary. His head here, you can crop that bit of his hair off just to move his hairline up. Here's where we're, here's where I'm having some problems. Exposure. Like, do you have a light meter yet? I'm willing to say no, because in here, this is no detail at all. Like if this was a negative, this is called like nothing. There's no exposure there at all. And you can't, you can't, you can't like, and also we, we've talked about this too, the, the non black, black, like you're doing this treatment, you're shooting on a black background, but you're not making the black, black, the black is not 100% D max. The black is like 70% black and it makes me crazy. And I've talked about this before, like. And even if it's a technique that you're doing, it's a trick and it's a crutch and it's not a thing. Black looks like this. This is 100% black. It is D-Max. It's black, black. Now, this black is how, like, is how it has to be. It has to be like this. This is black. This is the back of my photo. When we're looking at your photo, this is your black. And if you see the difference, it's painfully gray, painfully gray. Look at the difference. Black, your black, my black, your black, not black. And also we do this because the exposure isn't right. So when the exposure is wrong, like it is here, well, we have to bring the whole picture up, which means the black can be like, even look here on like the TV here, this is black. So you can see the difference between the TV black and your black. Like I'm trying to, to help, to help you <clears throat> not just be a great photographer, but be a technician as well. And you need to know how to expose properly. So when you want something to be black, it's black. Don't 
do this trick where, yeah, but my black, I like this kind of a look because I think it looks cool. No, that's not a thing. Don't, don't like, this is a crutch where it's like this technique that you're using that's not a technique that works. It's not something that, it's not something that works. And it's technically like if you sent, if I gave you a pair of black Air Jordans to shoot on a black background, if you gave me this black background and half the Air Jordan just disappearing into nothing, like here, that would be a fail for me. So I see where your softbox is. It's placed too high. It's so high, it's causing really hard, like, top light, okay? So next thing is there's no reflector or anything on this side to kick back where the light isn't because there's only light coming from this one side up here. There's only light coming from here, but there's no reflector here to kick back the negative nut like and also i know you don't have a light meter i know you don't because this is literally a stop underexposed it's shot underexposed so then you had to bring it back up which is why the black isn't black so these are like and 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 also this light is so far around this way in order to achieve this half light Here's the, here's the background. Here's your subject. You're putting your light here in order to achieve half light. You can literally achieve half light background here. Your camera position is here. You achieve half light here at that angle. And if that's 90 degrees to you, you achieve half light at 45 degrees. Once you go past, this is called the safety zone. Again, watch my, watch my one light, like two ways to splatter what with one light, like that lighting video from way back. I talk about the safety zone and the extreme zone and how when you light in the extreme zone, you get this, which is your eyeball is shadowing your eye. Like his own eye is creating the shadow for this part in here, let alone the whole other side of his face, which just gets nothing. Light from here, you get the same half light effect, only there's a pocket of light here. You hit this end with a reflector, and now you have something that you can sell to somebody that looks like this is just practicing. You're practicing. And it's, I know you're better than this, Sebastian. I know you're better than this. If you want him looking so hard straight at camera, the light can't be where it is. It has to come around to where he's looking. You're not shooting this side of his head. You're shooting this side of his face. So bring that light around a little bit. 45 degrees more, Sebastian. And please buy a light meter. Please buy a light meter. Please buy a light meter at, because you're shooting these a full stop underexposed. And if you're shooting without a light meter, you don't know that you're shooting a full stop underexposed, which means you're just wasting time. And then you submit these photos and then I look at them and then I say this, where's the detail here? And bo But you don't know because, because you don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. You're such a natural, natural light shooter. But when you try to be quote unquote dramatic, and I say dramatic like this because you haven't even learned practical lighting yet, but you're trying to be dramatic. Learn practical lighting first, then be dramatic. You know what I mean? Usually people light very boring and I have to teach them how to be a little bit more extreme. You're the exact opposite. You're lighting way extreme. And I'm, dude, no, it's so wrong. I need to bring you back to like traditional lighting placement. Please watch my lighting placement videos. There's two of them in my making making photos playlist. Legendary hacks photographers use in studio. 
and two ways to flatter with one light. Watch them both again, Sebastian, please. You absolutely need to. All right, that is Sebastian K with a double page spread. This is Alice with a double. Um, we're down to the last final five photos here. Alice with a double page spread and Cardi Crew merch. Alice, let's go. Let's have a look at this as a double. It definitely fits the formatting. For me, this picture is a little claustrophobic, actually. Like, like I want to see more of this photo. You're too close in the frame in this picture. Like, the, they're, they're so, it's like, you need to oh, like either go closer, but don't cut off this side of the dome. You have so much room that you could have gone this way in order to move over. And also how close this is down here. You're gonna lose a lot of that when you go to print. You're gonna lose even more of this when you go to print. And I don't think a half face idea was your idea for this. But if you're gonna do that, just commit. Go this close. Go this close and do a half face. Like if you're gonna do it, commit. Do it the whole way. But now when you're looking at this picture, like, like you want, I want the whole mask, just move over. So again, it's it's like for your crop, this is the only crop that works, is this. I, I think that it's too, it's too close. I feel like the camera position need, you need to be back like six feet or the camera needs to be moved back six feet. But Vicky says that she has that um, in another shot. I just think this is one of those situations where you pick the wrong shot. And also like, this is what's going on back here. It's kind of boring. I mean, not to be so dry, but really it's just pea yellow, like vinyl siding as a background. There's nothing umph about it. And Yes, it kind of plays off the yellows that you have happening here. But it's also like when we look at this white thing and see the color and we look at the top of the helmet and the color, it's like it's actually distracting from what you're doing. Like seeing so much of this just repetitive, like it's there's nothing here. It's like same idea, different background. There's so many cool locations. Like you need your location to also be as high end as like your idea, your location, where you're choosing to do this. Vicky, you're like my first from this whole program. You're like the first one who took my mentorship, my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Your level has gone from here to like here. But because of that, I can tell you and I can push you even further. This idea works best when you go crazy with the location. The flower stuff isn't enough. It's got to be the flower stuff and the right location. You know what I mean? But again, you always swing for the fences. You've won photo of the week so many times I can't count. Um, this one for me isn't it. And again, I think it's because you submitted the wrong photo. I think you have the right photo. I just think that you didn't submit it. I think you submitted this photo. You thought this one was better, but again, hindsight's always 20 to the 20. Who Matthew Sargent with some new family shots from a paid engagement shoot. Cardi was absolutely right. Um, the photos I need to be making are the are the ones that I'd be paid for. Photos for my niche, for my niche. Photos that display love and connection. F4, a 60th of a second, 47 millimeter, ISO 200. This is Matthew Sargent. Thanks for submitting that. Let's look at this as a double. As a double, it's textbook. I, I literally couldn't have asked for a more textbook double page photo, Matt. This is, an 11 out of 10. 
absolutely it's the right location i love how you're using the rock here like as an offset for the weight and the heaviness of like this in the frame this tree is really complementary to this yes there's a couple of like distractions and stuff in the background but you dropped you dropped the horizon line low i would have pushed the horizon line a little lower but it gets to the point where you don't want to be looking up at them that much but look at how they're squared up they're squared up to camera the feet the body language like the awkwardness and just like the love and connection between these two people like you absolutely feel it let's have a look at it close up the focus is good matt i want you to be really really watching your focus make sure that you're like rip rip tight on the eyes i would be aiming for like f4 to 5.6 for these types of photos um again really strong strong composition your exposure is really good your exposure is actually i would call this like perfect on the exposure um this is an image that would look great in black and white um the outfits are just simple enough to be forgettable. They're both wearing the same t-shirt, which is cute. A, a, a small thing, I would take this placard, which has been pried off and stolen, and literally just Photoshop that <clears throat> to like just clone a piece of this over top of this rock here just to like get rid of that white spot because I find it like probably the most distracting thing in the picture. There's a couple of highlights back here. Um, very easy to take away these highlights in post. Very easy to take away this kind of stuff. Um, again, these are the kinds of things, these highlights, this, I just try to take away this kind of stuff. So when you look at the photo, you just see them all the grass i clean up the grass i take away all this these little bits this dark stuff this off the ground i do all of this with all of my images this pine cone that's right in front of them unless that's somehow significant i would take that away as well um but the gap the distance here matt is right on the lot this distance is mint the foot distance is also perfect is riding the edge but again, it's perfect because you didn't give too much headspace. Most people were dropping their eye line like mid of the page, but you nailed this perfectly. One of the best um, double page executions of the day. Um, and again, it's very hard when you're doing couples, but this is very, very well done. Very well done. Matt Sargent, Kyle G. One of my favorite somewhat local waterfalls. I like to visit during different seasons to see how it changes. Sony a7 IV, 35 millimeter, shot at a fifth F11 at ISO Hundo. This is Kyle G. Let's have a look at Kyle G. Thanks for submitting. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of textbook, double page like really textbook and there is details in this photo like the leading line that bring you along here and right to this subject the yellow yellow and orange kind of clash but that's not your fault that's obviously what your subject is wearing um this I would change the color of this orange to like a green. So it's green and yellow or like a blue. So it's blue and yellow. So those colors don't clash so much. Um, again, I don't usually change jacket colors, but if it was like the stylist would have never let this leave the, leave the, she'd be like those two colors. No, you would never do the orange with the yellow. No, no, no. So other than that, like this is just, styling kind of stuff but again we have to be aware of it um 
very good focus we actually see the f-stop on the back of the bag so we're seeing that branding i'm liking the no identity and then some nice details like using the slow shutter to show movement he shot this at a fifth of a second which is risky when you're shooting a subject that has to be completely still during the capturing of this photo but kyle absolutely nailed it you get real movement in the water where if you look at this water just as it on its own this looks like literally this looks like a painting it's so beautiful seeing water photographed at this shutter speed like it's gorgeous this is for me an absolute 11 out of 10 execution again just showing you what it looks like um oops as the double page spread showing you that your camera horizontal is two pages in a magazine exactly this is exactly the layout and kyle nailed it really great job dude great job on yana Finally got a handsome and talented boyfriend to sit for a photo. Um, Nikon D7500, ISO 100, 35 millimeter F4 at a hundredth of a second. Shot by on Yana. All right, Yana, thanks for submitting. <laughs> You know, the pose is a little odd, but it works, if that makes any sense. It's a little odd, but it works. Obviously, the neck of the guitar is gonna have like a little bit of a dip as it goes through this gutter. But the fact that this guitar is going through the other page, the neck of the guitar, and it like actually gives you good leading line from the article into him and also good from him into the article i kind of like his look i mean he's got a vibe you know and and again he's pulling his chin back which is something that we do like you're also shooting him over the shoulder which we've talked a lot like he's sitting sideways just have him sit towards camera and the base naturally goes that way it naturally goes that way. So just have him sit how he would naturally, like him holding this like a gun, like this, that's not, like this hand obviously is down here, this hand is up here, and the base is never at that angle, and like he would never sit in a chair like that. So just have him sit in the chair and just look at you, and then compose how you're gonna make that work between two pages. Like for me, like, I think you lost me on the like you tried to do a static photo that was like fit the format but it made it feel like it feels a little and then again, over the shoulder men look best when you shoot us like this like squared up squared up like this i mean when we're like this and the camera's here it's, it's so awkward to be turned this way and look that way. It's says over the shoulder, which you hear me talk about so often. Square up. He's a bass player. Now look, he's playing the bass. He's playing the bass. Not this way and then holding the bass like this with this hand pointing it forward. And then his free hand is just on his lap. Like it, it just, the language doesn't make sense. And, and the bass, this so high above his head, up here, so high above his head when the bass usually exists like in this area. So you could easily have still had it come into the other side of the frame, but just not at that radical angle the light the light is like you're just hitting him with light you're it's you're getting closer but 
your light is too low. We've talked about this today. Your light is too low. You're lighting at him like this instead of lighting, lighting him down, like which narrows his cheeks, which like all of the thing, like you need also need to watch my lighting videos so you can see how I place light because once you like, you need to see it, you need to see it. And also he squares up. You now can place the light with his face looking at camera, not, do you know what I mean? So body language for me here is so wrong. And him, the difference where you've heard me say chin on the table, stick your chin out like it's on a table like this, or like, just look at the difference. He's pulling back. Like, so look, look at, and, and, and here's the evidence because you can see he's hiding his neck. This is what we do. When people don't want to have their photo taken, they pull back. So you have to counter, you did, 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 don't do that. You have to correct it. Know that every single person that you're photographing, they're doing this. They're pulling back. So we take photos of people like this. Like, it looks bad. And when you see it from the side, I have a beard. If I didn't have my beard, it's like, so body language, it, it, it's like, to be a portrait photographer, we have to be masters of body language. You're going to shoot a bass player. Search. Bass player. And then images. And look at how every bass player is holding their guitar. It's never like it's always it feels natural. And then you look at portraits of people with their base. And you see how he's squared up to camera, squared up to camera, squared up. Or they're playing. So you can't pose somebody with an instrument or it looks ridiculous. And if you're gonna pose someone, look at how this back hand, because this back, oh my goodness, this is so hard to do this. Because this back hand is holding the bass the wrong way. How many people do you see who hold their bass with the hand on the top this way and not like this, like this, seriously. And with the, like he's doing this to his base for reals. So these are the things like as photographers that it's up to us. We have to correct this. And oh my goodness, God forbid, what we're doing is we're actually putting people in terrible poses and then photographing them or letting people put, go into their own terrible poses and then we're photographing them. That's what we're doing. Like there's so many different ways to shoot somebody with an instrument and it's like standing next to it is the, yeah, just put it there. Have the person sit there if you want to have it in there, but if they're holding it, it better not look like they're like, it doesn't even look like it's theirs. And you photographed your husband who is a com incredibly talented bass player with his bass and you're making him hold it in a way that it looks like it's not even his. It looks like he doesn't even own it. So that's your mistake that you have to fix. And again, you're saying I have a frame of him picking, posing like that. Why, why was this the photo that for you is your hero? Why this one? And again, I have a peer group. I can't, I can't like, tell you what photo to submit. I can't, I can't go that far. I can't, let's go. Eric becoming a member for 
Oh, here comes all the redos. Look, here they come. Redo, redo, redo. Let's go. Reups. I appreciate you, Mandel and Eric and Angela and Cameron and BG for becoming a member. Thank you. Tony, Tom, and Britt for all re-upping or becoming members. Let's get it. All right. Okay, that is Yana. Something in my eye. Other than the eyeball. Whew. Seven months. Jeez, have we been doing this for that long with the members? I guess we have. Jay Williams' first photo submission. Pentax K3 50 3.5 250. Um, natural light. All right, let's look at Jay Williams. Not to be mistaken for Jason Williams. All right, Jay, good shot. Thanks for submitting. Appreciate you. Eight months. And Scuba Steve and Vicky, thanks for becoming members again, re-upping. Let's have a look at the frame here. You are another one, my friend, that are falling into the rule of thirds trap. Rule of thirds, gotcha. Look at this photo. Number one, her eye line is in the absolute center of the frame. Her eye line is way too low, way too low. Look at the headspace here. Please look at the headspace here. Like seriously, this is a lot of headspace that you're wasting. Not sure why. There's nothing back there that's important that I need to see. But what you are doing is you're taking um, Paitlin and almost clipping her ID necklace because it's claustrophobic to the edge of the frame. So you shooting using the thirds because she is so perfectly right here on the thirds like the guidebooks tell you to do. You can see how, although in theory, that's what you're told to do, in practice, we can see how absolutely wrong compositionally this photo is. So, <sighs> headspace like this when you're shooting a cover and when you're shooting vertical, but even that, it's too much headspace. You don't need this much headspace. Um, the focus is nailed. The light, inspired light, Focus is good, the light is good, although it's mixed light, meaning you have perfect open shade here, but there's a patch of actual hard sun that's coming through here that's influencing a little bit of her face and doing some weird shadows, which it's super easy to just have her take a step left or right. But then also, we're taking this picture in a mall. This is a mall. So you're making a hero picture in a mall? Like, I see this huge bit of light and I see these butterfly displays and I see people walking by in the background and I see mixed light. Like, this isn't the location. I see this band of white, which is the floor that like, this is a tourist picture that you took, which is okay. You're allowed to take photos. You're allowed to take photos, but just know, like, don't mistake taking pictures and making pictures. If you're trying to make a photo, make a hero photo, it's not happening at the mall. It's not, and if you're wanting to shoot editorially of your kids, look at how Anna has shot kids. Anna shoots kids like it's she's shooting for a magazine. Editorially, on location, the right outfits and the right, like, the, like, takes it way further than just, hey, oh, those are pretty butterflies, stand there. And then, okay, perfect, here's my hero picture, I'm gonna submit it. Really? Come on, no, I'm sorry. It's, you gotta try way harder than that. And I'm not trying to be hard on you, Jay, but I'm just telling you, this is taking pictures. We're trying to make pictures. It's close, but, you are just putting somebody, you didn't drive to this mall, to this butterfly display to make this photo. You were there, you saw it, you took the photo. So 
it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. You need to f take your daughter, take her to a, a yellow wall. She's wearing a red sweater. So there's the contrast of the yet and then put her against a blank wall, have her with a skateboard, have her doing something rather than just, do you know what I mean? Cause it's just interesting for you. It's just interesting. It's your kid. It's just, of course it's interesting for you, but for us, like, would this qualify for an ad for the gap? Would the gap buy this? Well, no, because it's not shot on white on a clean background under studio light with, with fat gap fashion. And also you're cutting her fashion out. So it's more of a portrait, but then if it's a portrait, then why is it so distracting in the background? If it's a portrait, why is there butterflies in the background and people walking and like lights and bright lights and why are you in a mall? Like, so you can't mail in anything, literally. It's like, there's a, there's a place for you to shoot and walking through the mall is not a location. There's too many people there. How can you command the attention of your subject that you need when you're shooting like that? So, Jay. Beautiful daughter, beautiful girl, great subject. Shoot her differently. Shoot her not like a tourist. Shoot her like a photographer. Look at Sally Mann. Look at Sally Mann. If you want to see one of the best photographers that have shot their children, look at Sally Mann. Sally Mann has made some of the most profound photographs of children that have ever been made. I mean, her pictures were so controversial because she would show photographs of her kids with no shirt on like this. And it's like, oh my God, it's child pornography. It's like, it's my own kid, it's art. But Sally Mann, this photographer literally changed how children were photographed because she made this photo. She made that photo of the girl in the water. Oh my God, where's, there it is. This set. Um, Sally Mann. And again, I'm also a dictionary of information. This is the most Sally, this is the most famous Sally Mann photo. Put your hand up and give me a hey ya yeah, if you've seen this photo. So Jason, when it comes to taking pictures of your kids, I just showed you Anna, Kaya, Anna, Kaya, absolutely yes yes. killed it. Look at Sally Mann's photography of her kids. So you have to try harder. You have to try harder. Like literally you have to try harder. It can't, it can't, this is, this is literally Sally Mann shooting portraits of her kids. So it can't be this. It can't be in the mall, my friend. It can't be. You just have to like, you gotta try harder. You gotta lean in, lean in. Um, also headspace too low in the frame. Um, yeah, all the things that I said, look at Matthew Sargent's picture from earlier, the way he spaced and fit the person perfectly in there. There's no cropping when it comes to horizontal pictures, all the stuff I said, you have to nail your composition. Exactly. You're taking pictures here. You didn't shoot a hundred frames of this because you would have saw all of those mistakes. If you shot a hundred frames, you shot three frames of this and you sent me your best one. It's not good enough. Um, submit again, Jason, please, please, please. The bar is high. If you are trying to make a nickel at this photography game, bro, if you're mailing it in, you're just hurting yourself. This is dreadfully blessed. This is my submission. Dreadfully blessed is a car photographer. You want to see how dreadfully blessed rocks? This is how he delivers a double page spread. Let's go dreadfully. Dreadfully blessed gave me, you changed the proportions on me. If you change the proportions, 
and crop in any other way than giving me the exact frame from your camera, this is what happens. It doesn't fit within a double page frame. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit because you'll notice when other people have submitted and I click the picture and I go here to open in browser and you notice how this fits exactly within the format because they've not changed anything. They've just given me the shot. As Soon as you change the proportions, they no longer fit in a double page. So you now you see how you changed your proportions. You made something closer to 16 by nine, which is not two pages in a magazine. So because of that, where your seam falls, where this falls, by the way, is dead center. And you can't have that drop dead center. This seam is too close to dead center. Where the seam needs to go is here because this is too interesting. Or the seam needs to go here, somewhere along here, because this is kind of the feature of the picture. So you, you missed where you dropped the gutter. You missed where you dropped this. And then also there's a flaw in the paint right here. I don't think that that's a reflection. I think that that's a paint flaw. So this is something that you could definitely fix. Um, yeah, just look at the difference. Like it's very square. It feels like um, like the three by two when you look at it, like it's got to stay at a three by two proportion. You changed the three by two. So because of that, it doesn't fit. It's no longer a double page spread. So you failed the assignment for that reason, because you free cropped, you cropped it the way that you wanted to crop it. And it has to literally maybe 4,000 pixels wide, but it has to stay the same proportion, which means there should be white here and there should be white here, which there is not. So you change the proportion. This is three and this is two. So, um, yours is more like three and a half by, by two. So, um, I would love to see this back as the whole photo so I can actually see if it fits into the proportions that it's supposed to, you know what I mean? It's hard for me to judge because I know you shot more than one frame of this blessed. I know that for sure, but you definitely got to know, like lock in, like what comes out of your camera at horizontal is two pages in a magazine. You can't change that proportion. You can't. I mean, you can, but if you're submitting here, I want magazine format. So give me three by two proportions or two by three proportions, because I can show you what it would be as a crop, as it can be like I have, as I've made this horizontal frame, I'm also going to make like an eight by 10, a nine by 12. So you'll see what your pictures look like at different crops. I think that that's definitely a helpful little addition here, especially looking at horizontal heroes. Dreadfully, send me another frame. I'm convinced that you have better frames or give me that frame back um, out of camera. All right, Bella, who is Ricky De Silva's daughter, asked for, um, a cool looking photo session. She, he tried the shutter drag technique, Fuji camera, 56 millimeter at F nine shutter speed at an eighth of a second. Um, using both continuous light and strobe with like a drag shutter effect. Let's have a look at Ricky. Thanks for submitting Ricky. As a double page, it's very, it's, it's very close. You're also using the thirds. As you can see, you are also using the thirds. This lovely 17 year old daughter is on a third and there is the second third. Yes or yes. So Ricky, again, as I've said earlier today, don't use those guides when you're shooting 
in an editorial fashion, which is what we do. We shoot for editorials, we shoot for magazines. And when you're using the thirds, they don't work with double page spreads because you can see how in having her on third, how absolutely claustrophobic she is to the gutter. This arm behind her head I would have loved to have stopped her, but she's holding the light behind her. And I definitely understand that it's part of the pose, but you know, this going under the gut over the gutter is going to dip like that and then come and it's going to make her elbow look out of proportion. It's going to look like it's not like attached to her body properly and the printing might not line up properly. So there is a couple of elements as far as that, as far as the cool photo for sure using fabric as the background instead of paper fabric is not what pros do pros do not use fabric as backgrounds unless it's heavy duty canvas like heavy heavy canvas where your background weighs like 80 pounds like those backgrounds don't wrinkle but canvas i mean fabric creates wrinkles and un like it just looks low frequency like throw it's like oh i'm gonna take a photo let me put a bed sheet up as a background like this looks as bed sheet and diy as you could possibly ask like so want your stuff to not look diy use paper use a wall or don't use fabric backgrounds they don't work unless you're pulling them using duct tape, pulling them a hundred percent taut. So there's not even a possibility of a wrinkle. They look like this. They just looks like cheap polyester. That's what it looks like. So imagine you're going to take like an expensive fat photo, an expensive session, an expensive idea and photograph it on a cheap polyester background that's wrinkled. And then post-production with this gradient of light here, how are you going to retouch those wrinkles out without it looking like you've touched them out? Well, you didn't do it at all. You just submitted them. So that's, that's why we don't shoot fabric. That's why we don't use fabric backgrounds. It's just, I use, I have um, velveteen. Velveteen is a fabric background. It renders 100% black. When I use it, I tape it, like hermetically seal it to the wall. So there's not a single back wrinkle and then, and it eats light so you don't see anything. And all those pictures where you see me shooting to jet black, that's how it's done. It's how it's done with black velveteen. So how white is done or how a gray gradient is done using white is with paper. We need to use paper as a background, seamless paper. There's rolls of it. You buy it when it wrinkles, you cut it off and pull down more fresh and you keep doing that until the roll is done. And then you buy a new one. Trying to save money by using fabric backgrounds means that everything that you shoot on that fabric background is basically unusable. So. Oh, great idea. Great idea. You lost me on two things. The thirds, instead of composing for a double page spread, you're following the rules of thirds, which doesn't apply really ever. And also um, the fabric background. It's like, like train your mind to to be doing things the ways that the pros do it and you'll notice you don't see pros use fabric backgrounds so when you're on amazon and being like oh fabric backgrounds like just don't buy them just don't buy them they don't work <laughs> just don't buy them <laughs> guys that is photo reviews i saw some absolute bangers bangers. I'm going to talk to you about photo of the week, and then I'm going to give you another assignment because I actually got through all of the photos and we are back to our regular scheduled programming. We are back to our regular scheduled programming. Thank you very much. Here's the deal. I have some photos of the week and then I have an assignment. My assignment is... Uh, 
And again, the photos this week, and I'm giving less photos of the week. Not everybody's getting accolades. If you heard me give you praise, take the praise. If you heard me give you shit, hear the shit that I gave you and fix it. There's a couple of processing things in a couple of photos. I'm trying to give photo of the week to photos that I said nothing about because there was nothing to say because they were a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm giving photo of the week to literally, um, okay. There's another one. I have two so far, two so far. And I'm being an asshole about how hard I'm judging these being an asshole as far as how hard I'm judging these, because the level of the work is too good. It's too good. So I'm judging you against yourself. Okay. That's it. That's it. How many we got? One, two, three, four. Wow. Four photos in no particular order. Here is your first photo of the week. This photographer never ceases to amaze me, has one photo of the week since he's watched more times than pretty much anyone else. The consistency that this photographer wins photo of the week is mind boggling. Ladies and gentlemen, first, no particular order, but our first photo of the week goes to Kyle G with this photo right here. Photo of the week, absolute double page mastery. Mastery, Kyle G, congratulations, Kyle. Excellent photo, excellent. Our next photo of the week, again, a masterful edge, a, a masterful, masterful execution. A matter of fact, I got one more photo of the week. One more are we going to add in here? One more. Yeah, one more. And again, they have to be perfect double page spreads. Perfect. Okay. First one, Kyle G. Second, our second photo of the week goes to Matthew Sargent for this photo right here. Masterful double page composition. Masterful. Very, very well executed. Congratulations, Matt. You win photo of the week. Our next photo of the week. This person, masterclass, mentorship. The level and how hard this photographer tries <laughs> and how hard I push the shooter. But it works. It works. Our next photo of the week goes to the one who's about to fall off his chair. Durell Scott, masterful double page spread execution. Photo of the week, Durell Scott. Congratulations, Durell. Your next photo of the week. New shooter watching, but the consistency of this photographer from using himself as a self-portrait for editorial submissions, making mistakes using uplight that I just ripped him a new asshole for, to delivering photos like this. <laughs> that just make me do this. Our next photo of the week goes to Kai Creates with this photo right here. Double page spread mastery from Kai Creates. 
beautiful, beautiful color, composition, location, light, everything. Sorry, guys. The bar was high this week. The bar was high this week. And our last, our last photo of the week, but the one today that just proves to me like this photographer, I've said so many times, this photographer is so much better than she thinks that she is so much better. <laughs> if this photographer had the confidence in herself that I have in her, everybody would know Anna Kaya. And I'm helping her because Anna has a very complicated name and we've shortened it to Anna Kaya. So Anna Kaya, we shortened her name because it's super catchy like this, has won our final photo of the week. Anna Kaya with this absolute showstopper double page spread. Anna, this stopped the scroll. This literally stopped me dead in my tracks. This photo is a portfolio picture. Should be in your portfolio today. Guys, that is your photos of the week. Now, this week's assignment. This week's assignment. Yes, sir, yes. Um, we've, we've done hero photos. You've shot hero photos horizontally and you've shot hero photos vertically. We've shot covers. We've shot end pages. End pages. Okay. Because we've shot so many aspects of the editorial realm, we are now introducing products. We are introducing commercial assignments. Commercial assignments. So your assignment, if you choose to accept it, create a vertical advertisement of the product of your choice. I need only a hero, like an advertisement is a hero product shot, a hero shot surrounded like around a product within your niche. So if you're a fashion photographer, you could shoot eyewear, you could shoot fashion, you could shoot accessories. If you're a car photographer, the car is the product. Like I need you to create an ad. It needs to be vertical. It needs to have room for copy and it needs to sell a product. This is going to be one of the hardest things that you've had to do, but you can do it. Even if you're not a product photographer, understand I said, attach a product to your niche. If you're a kid photographer, what product could you photograph? And again, this is not, I'm going to be very specific. This is not you just looking around and saying, um, oh, a lighter. Okay, here's my product. Here, hold that. The lighter's my product. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. It can be your iPhone. It can be AirPods. It can be something that you own. But if it's not newish, if it's not polished and like, look like it just came out of the package because believe me, every ad that you see, they take the product out of the package, they shine it and they photograph it. It's not something that's got this much left in the bottle, perfume it, you're like, I'm just gonna photograph that. It's like, maybe it costs you $50. Maybe you buy a perfume, it costs $50 for you to buy that Calvin Klein bottle and then you intelligently imitate somebody else like Raymond Mayer who shoots perfumes and you execute that. If you're a product photographer, if you're a people photographer, find advertising that's people-based. What product are they advertising in that image and imitate that? Like. There's going to be no excuses here. And believe me, 
if you thought doing editorial assignments were difficult, do you understand? I shoot magazines and like all the time, but magazine, it's just, it keeps coming. Magazine work, it just keeps coming. Oh, like they, ah, I mean, that picture was great, but I like the one you did before even better, you know, but they keep coming. Advertising. There's way more money on the line. This is like a hundred thousand dollar campaign. Okay. So if I'm paying you a hundred thousand dollars to create a, a, a picture around a product within your niche and you're just, uh, Oh, I'll shoot this. <laughs> Do you think? Sure. I'll like, thank you, but I'll never call you again. I'll never call you again because you're mailing it in. This is now, this is going to separate the level of seriousness because shooting editorially, shooting editorially, once you learn how to make pictures, shooting editorially is easy. Shooting advertising is shooting to layout. And I'm not even telling you what the layout is. Do you understand how hard that is? It means you have to just make something that you think I'm going to like. Better start intelligently imitating because the bar, you're going to see this. People are going to fail miserably if they've never experienced shooting products. The photographers who, you, who watch me who use a new product every time they submit, they're going to murder this assignment because they've done so many reps with learning how to incorporate products into their photography. So learning how to shoot and what's the product the product can be anything anything from eyewear to like but you have to purchase the thing to shoot it or it has to be brand new like literally i have stacks of brand new sunglasses i've worn twice so i can take one of those sunglasses and shine them up because they cost 400 dollars a pair and i could shoot a pair of those sunglasses you know, but if you have like a $10 sunglasses from like a dollar store, like do me a favor, don't shoot them literally because like if, unless it's a brand and again, you, okay. So you're practicing. Okay. And it, they don't have to be sunglasses. I'm saying it can be any product, but it better be photographable. If I see like stuff that you're pulling, like window cleaner and shit from under your sink, oh, it's a new bottle of Windex. I'm gonna, that's gonna be my product. Okay, okay, okay. Again, make it sick. Make it sick because like it's your portfolio. It's this is your portfolio. And think, would you hire you based on the work that you're showing and based on how hard you're trying? So, that is your assignment. Create, and I've never asked any, I've never done this assignment here before, advertising assignment, but it's gonna start. And we're gonna loop back to editorial and we're gonna go into lifestyle again. I'm going to be bringing assignments that are gonna make you hate me, but I'm telling you, you will be a hundred times the photographer that you are right now, this time next year, if you play this game with me. If you play this game where you follow my lead and you do these assignments, you do these executions that I ask you to do to spec, you learn that here for free with no, with their, like, with no consequence. The only thing you might get is a bad review. Oh, who, who cares? You got a bad review. Who cares? You learn from that review. And the next one is like, oh my God, you know how much I learned from that mistake? That's why we have to make mistakes so you can fix them. This is why seeing your improvement, people who submit week after week, seeing your improvements are so amazing. But when you mail one in, when you mail one in, after weeks of consistent growth, just because you ran at a time, just because you think it hurts my feelings when you don't submit photos, it doesn't hurt my feelings. What hurts my feelings is you mailing in a photo. That just pisses me off because it's hurting you more than it hurts me. 
for me, it just makes me angry because you're, you're doing something that's beneath you, which is low frequency. So when you do that, that's why I react like this because you're, you're doing low frequency shit. So I, I give you that look, you know, and you know it and you know yourself that you're doing low frequency stuff, but yet you still do it because you think low frequency is better than nothing. And guess what? It's not. Nothing is better than low frequency. Nothing. Because you affecting my perception of your work by giving me something that shit after giving me things that were 11s, now I don't trust you. Now I don't trust your, now I don't trust you because you're, you mail things in where before you've only done a hundred percent. I would rather you say, if I can't do an 11, I don't pick up my camera. I'd rather you, I tried it. It didn't work out. I'll submit next week when I try it again on the next assignment. I'd rather that. I'd rather you do the assignment for yourself. No, like I failed, figure out why you failed and like post it to just chatting and talk about like this failed H guys help me how can we make it better you know because when your bar lowers literally it, it it's it, it means that you don't know what good and bad is you don't know your own levels your own 11 and your own three everything to you looks like an 11 or everything to you looks like a three you see a th your work that's amazing, you think it's shit. You see your work that's shit and you think it's shit. So either everything you do is you think is bad or everything you, th you do you think is amazing. Either way, it's a huge problem. <laughs> it's a huge problem. So you have to learn your bars because that's how we edit. You can look through photos and be like, no, 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 no. Yes, that's the photo. And that's why I shoot 100 frames for one photo. So. There's a method to my madness. There's a Cardi method, actually. And speaking of the Cardi method, we are trying to get back to regular master classes. <laughs> trying to make it so we have a master class this Sunday. Trying to make it. If everything works out, it should be no problem doing a master class on Sunday. But it also takes me so much time doing the research before the master class. There's a possibility that it has to get like next weekend. Maybe if you're in my master class and watching this, then maybe I haven't announced it yet. I'm going to decide tomorrow all based on moving my shit. So guys, I hope this brought you value. I hope you know what to do. I hope you missed our interactions and our vibes and are excited about our next one, which is Sunday behind the picture. And, um, what I'll be talking about, I do not know. What I probably will be talking about is the Renos, what the space looks like, the new location, how easy it is to get to, all my different sets, everything on we. I'll just probably be talking about that. And yeah, my lecture that I did today at the Ontario, uh, Ontario College of Art and Design. Oh, really? What, what, pardon? What's that? What? This podcast is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch. Every piece you see, designed by the photographer you're currently watching. And let me let you in on a little secret. Meticulously hand-stitched by the arthritic grandmothers of our very own viewers. Well, uh, what? This creative community inspired this entire line. Your zeal okay, for artistry, your tireless dedication, and your individuality shines in every stitch and design. This isn't just another piece of clothing. It's a badge of honor for every creator out there. From what I see here, they are mostly just black t-shirts and hoodies, but you do you boo. You actually want me to read the rest of this script? Oh my God, who is this guy? From the nuanced patterns to the vibrant colors, everything has been designed keeping in mind the creative soul that lies within each one of us. Wow, who wrote that? There isn't a single pattern, not one. Oh my God, leave the There's commentary. There's hardly any nuance. But it says oh here, God, this merch this represents more than just apparel. It's an emblem of our shared passion for creativity. Who wrote this? What absolute twaddle. Wow, this guy's a great supporter. All of this stuff is kind of basic, to be honest. But I'll keep that to myself. Okay. 
Let the world know you're a part of something bigger. A photographer on YouTube's clothing collection that he actually has the balls to make a commercial about. Okay, what Sorry, is going what on? Sorry, what I meant to say is, a collective of photographers that celebrates and uplifts every form of creativity. I am aware, as the narrator, I'm not allowed to insert my own narrative. But, holy moly, this is horrible. Wow. Join the movement, embrace your creative spirit with Cardi Crew merch. And yes, he is really calling this a movement. Be proud of your passion for photography. Be proud of your creative life. If photography is your life, flaunt it. The one paying for this advertisement has asked me to make a toast. Isn't this a podcast? Okay, it'll cost you another 20. Let's raise a toast to every photographer, artist, and creative out there. Thanks for being a part of this journey. This guy's so Did patronizing. That, suit you? that was absolutely ridiculous. Please don't make me read anything like that again. Back to the show. Guys. I hope this brought you value. Today was fun. And you know, I actually needed this today. I said to my girl, like, I think I'm going to podcast tonight. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I need to. Like, I actually, how much this community fuels me. I definitely needed a break. I definitely needed to take a break. But I got to tell you, man. I am, look at me, look at the energy, look at the vibe. And I'm so excited for this year, this spring, the content that I have for you this year, the course is coming and the cardimethod.com. There's all kinds of free stuff that you can grab. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you can check in the video description of this podcast that you just watched. If it wasn't for this community, man, I really would do not know what I would do. I'm telling you, make sure you check the Cardi Method, my six phase system to help you go from making zero dollars with your camera to being a household name. That's what I'm trying to help you guys all be, which is pro creatives. Make sure you follow me on my socials. You can follow me at Steve Cardi here on Instagram and everywhere on social media. You can also follow the behind the picture account with Cardi, which is your images. Images that you saw here today appear on this account. So if you wanna see your pictures on Instagram on an account that will tag you, it's a great way to like bring your work to more people submit here the people who win photo of the week often get everybody who submits gets featured um we just picked the best photography i have a great person her name is vicky sonic who has been managing my instagram and has doubled the follower count since she has started it so vicky is my instagram guru she takes care of the account make sure you're following that thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you on Sunday, fingers crossed, with no issues, in a new space. Can't wait. This commercial-free stream is brought to you by the true Cardi crew, the hardcores, the members of this channel. I'm able to give you commercial-free content during every live stream because of the incredibly dedicated members of this channel. I literally, because of them, there's no ads ever. When you watch my show live, the members are the foundation of this channel. And of course, you made it to the end. So what you can do for me is tell me what the next piece of equipment you're going to buy is. I want to know what you're buying next. You got an eye on a lens. You got to get that 50 finally. You're tired of shooting with the kit lens. You need an 85. You're looking for a macro. Do you need lights? By the way, if you made it to the end of this video, in the video description, I have my gear list. Links for every single thing that I use to run my business. So make sure that you're not writing these comments in chat, that you're writing these comments in the comment section of my videos. Know that likes and comments make this channel go out to more people. I've been away, guys, for almost two weeks. I, this is my first podcast. If you guys don't share it and watch it, 
and watch it to the end, it's not going to go out to people. So help me rejig and rejump the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much. If you subscribe, you'll see your name scrolling across the bottom. If you're a member and you're the last 25, you'll see your name has been scrolling across the top. I missed you guys all. I'll see you on Sunday for the space reveal. One love.